In today's video, I'm going to show you what my morning routine looks like on a quote unquote good day versus a bad day. And I'm also going to show you how setting 10 minute timers to clean helps keep me afloat as a busy mum. And why I cannot recommend them enough for anyone who struggles with initiating tasks or just finding the will to start. Or anyone who has a hectic schedule. Now, when it comes to these morning routines, the use of the word good or bad is subjective. And it doesn't necessarily represent how I actually feel about them, as I think you'll come to realise. Anyway, I hope you enjoy watching and let's get into the video. Join me for a morning in my life on a bad day. By a bad day, I mean a day we were meant to wake up at 7 but snooze the alarm. Now it's 8 and we've got half an hour before we need to be out of the door. So toast for breakfast it is. It's my own fault. I got home from work at 10.15 last night. And then I made the mistake of watching one Nate the Hoof guy TikTok, got stuck on it until 2am. I can never watch just one, I find it so addictive. Here's me realising that the bread I put in the toaster is mouldy. We're late, why wouldn't it be mouldy? Let's try some Cheerios. By the way, in the next video I'm also going to show you what a morning in my life looks like on a good day. That version of my life happens about once a week, the rest of the time it's this. And I don't know, I just wanted to show you the complete contrast. And I haven't done a day in the life in ages. Anyway, boys are fed and now it's time to wipe down one surface so I've got a clean space to make Rudy's packed lunch. Which I should really have made last night, but never do. Same as getting his uniform ready. It's always a mad rush to find a shirt and socks and I never learn. Ah well. Who wants to come home from work at night and make a packed lunch? Not me. I always find that I need to have at least an hour at night to wind down, even when I've not been at work, just when the kids have gone to bed. I need an hour of not talking to people and just enjoying my own company. Washing the two Tupperware I actually need here instead of all of the washing, I don't have time. But yeah, I always take it too far after the kids have gone to bed and make myself overtired. I've still got last night's makeup on my face as well because I couldn't be bothered to have a shower. And why am I showing you all of this? Because for some people, early mornings and routines and school runs aren't easy or ever perfectly organised. And if your morning looks anything like mine, I just want you to know it's normal and you're doing alright. I like crying there because he apparently hates Cheerios now. Always have to take the time to slice my kids' scrapes no matter how much of a rush I'm in. My mum and my stepdad work in the NHS and I am petrified of whole grapes. No sandwich today because of the bread situation. Not that he ever eats his sandwich anyway, he takes one bite and puts it back. Time to get myself looking presentable. I'm literally putting leggings on and a jumper over the top of my PJs. <laughs> what can I say? Some days I'm the mum that looks like the love child of Kerry Mucklow and Adam Sandler, who always gets to school with just a minute to spare. And some days I'm the mum who gets up early and gets loads done and actually has time to look presentable. It's not often, but it happens. I like getting his own shoes on there, without socks, but I'm not going to argue. We're going for a walk after this anyway, so I'll put some socks and some wellies in the bottom of the push chair. But yeah, you can be both versions of you. And it's totally okay if you're only ever the chaotic, rushing around version of you. As long as you're getting up and getting your children washed and fed and off to school on time, who cares how you or your morning looks doing it? Anyway, I got Ike into the push chair, Rudy was almost ready, and I was very chuffed with myself because I managed to sneak a wash in before we left. Shouldn't have celebrated too soon though because I almost forgot to fill Rudy's water bottle up. Wouldn't be the first time I've gotten home only to get a text that I need to take his water bottle in. And it's 8.35 and we're out the door. Obviously forgot to lock it. And now it's time to give a knowing nod to the three other mums on the school run who are also always late. After that chaos, me and I went for a lovely walk with my mum. We saw some swans, threw some twigs into a stream to see how fast they'd move under the bridge. And then it was back home by 11 for my breakfast. And yes, I am eating chicken korma for breakfast. We watched some This Country and Ike had a good old play. And then I had a really quick speed clean to clear the floor because I've been doing Get Fit with Rick. I've been trying to get in 10,000 steps a day. I made a promise to myself that I'll do 10,000 steps each day, no exceptions. And I don't want to break promises to myself. I was originally going for walks with Ike in the push chair, but he started absolutely hating it. So I thought, I can't do this to him. It's not really fair. He wants to play. I think he'd actually be happy with it if he was walking. But 10,000 steps is a lot for a two year old. And he doesn't want to sit around in the push chair. And I don't blame him. So get fit with Rick it is. I realise I look absolutely ridiculous. And I'm still in my stinky pyjamas. But don't worry, I did have a shower after this, finally. And here it is, my day in the life on a bad day. And it didn't turn out to be a bad day in the end. 
join me for a morning in my life on a good day. And it's a good day because getting up at quarter to six in the morning does not and never will come naturally to me. So I'm always very chuffed with myself when I manage it and I'm ready to get stuff done. First things first, I need to get some caffeine and some vitamins into my system. Now, caffeine doesn't really work on me the way it works on other people. I can have a cup of coffee and fall asleep straight after. But it definitely makes me feel calmer and like I've got my life together. Don't know if you noticed there on the settee, but I had my son's uniform all ready to go. Did that last night. Very proud of myself. And I already made his lunchbox, which already puts me miles ahead of bad day Remy. If you don't know what I'm talking about, the other day I posted a morning in my life on a bad day. That's a chocolate button stuck to the bath, by the way, not poo. And the kids are still asleep, so I don't want to scrub away and wake them up. So I've just put some bleach on it to try and loosen it. But yeah, on the bad day video, we woke up at 8am and spent half an hour rushing before we had to be out of the door. And I wanted to show you the difference between a day like that and a day I actually managed to convince myself to get up early. On mornings like these, I like to do a 10 minute clean in every room in the house. A lot of people say that they could never go to sleep knowing that the house is messy and they do all of their cleaning at night before they go to bed. I don't. My battery for cleaning is non-existent at night. And I'll talk about that more in a second, but now it's time for my 10,000 steps with Get Fit with Rick. Let's see how many I get in before the kids wake up. 700. My kids can literally sense when I'm not upstairs with them. And no matter what time I wake up, whether that's 6am or 8am, I know they're not going to be far behind. And this is a big point I want to make with this video. It's definitely effective getting up earlier. It's always amazing to me how much of a difference getting up just an hour earlier can have on the entire trajectory of your day. But when you've got kids or pets or both, you can have the best intentions. You can have your morning plotted out. You can say, I'm going to work out from this time to this time. And you can have all of this extra time. And it still doesn't always go the way you planned. There was not a chance in the world my kids were going to sit there and let me finish 10,000 steps. That workout video takes an hour and 15 minutes. It was not happening. And it wouldn't have been fair for me to do so either. But yeah, I remember I always used to sit and watch YouTube videos about how getting up at 5am will change your life. Ike helping me with the hoover in here, he absolutely loves to hoover. But back to what I was saying, it was always getting up at 5am and sticking to routines and never budging from them will change your life. It means you're disciplined and mentally strong and everyone has the same 24 hours in a day. All of that. And I used to leave them feeling so demoralised and feeling like an absolute failure. But after ruminating on it all, I've noticed that the majority of these creators don't have children. If they do, they're not the mum of the children. And if they are, these children are unusually laid back and rarely neurodivergent. All children are different. Obviously, this isn't always the case. Some people are just superhuman and more props to them. But generally, this is what I've found. 90% of the time, these people also rarely work unsociable hours like lates or nights. And so sticking to these routines is, of course, going to be a lot easier. Didn't clean the downstairs bathroom today because it was already very clean. The boys are helping me clean their room here. And this is one thing I love about getting up this early. It's a relaxed day and everyone can pitch in and it's not a rush and it's not stressful. But back to what I was saying. Even when it comes to night shifts, there are going to be some outliers. My dad being one of them, I have never met a man more disciplined and he never deviates from his routine, but that is not the norm. For example, if I were able to get to bed every night at 8, 9pm, maybe I would find it easier to get up early every morning. But my youngest is like the Terminator and apparently thrives on as little sleep as possible. We rarely get to bed before 10 and he's always up early. By up early, I mean multiple times in the early hours of the morning. So yeah, it's important not to compare yourself to anyone else. They've got hurdles that we don't have to deal with and we've got hurdles that they don't have to deal with. Life looks different for us all. So whilst on some days I can wake up super early and blitz out a whole house clean before 9am, It's rare. It happens probably once a week. It's my reset day. It's my get back on top of everything day. And I plan it around a day I know Charlie's on a certain shift, which means if I need it, I can have a nap later on in the day. Or a day my mum's offered to take Ike out for a bit, like today. And here again is another example of why I might be able to get up at five, but not other people. I'm blessed to have family support. Not everyone has that. And if I didn't know the pressure was going to be taken off me a little bit later on in the day, there's no way I'd be able to convince myself to get up this early. 
Another thing I love about early starts is I get to have a shower and get ready. In the last video, which represents my morning most days, you saw me leave the house with last night's makeup still on my face and a jumper whacked over my PJ top. Days like this are so different. Going for the Julia from Motherland aesthetic today? All I care about is feeling clean and comfy. Anyway, I'm the type of person that wakes up tired even after sleeping 10 hours straight. And that's another thing I learned too late in life and it's something that would have taken away a lot of guilt. Did you know that women naturally need more sleep? And that work days and life in general aren't built for the cyclic nature of women? All of my life I felt like I could never keep up. Have you ever noticed that on some days you feel on top of the world? You've got more energy, you start stacking up days in a row where you've been super productive and gotten up super early. This morning we had time to practice Rudy's spellings before his test. But yeah, you feel happier, you've been able to smash any goals you might have set for yourself. And you start thinking, I've got this, I don't know why I found any of this hard. And then boom, entire personality shift. Can't seem to get yourself up and going. Can't seem to stick to the routine you found easy, literally yesterday. And we go through that every month. And every month we beat ourselves up about it. Why do we expect ourselves to be perfectly consistent for 30 days in a row when our bodies aren't consistent, when our hormones aren't consistent? Ike decided to help himself to some cookies there and put them in a trick-or-treat bag. Whatever. Anyway, I thought this video was just going to be me showing my morning on a good day. But it's turned into something of a rant. <laughs> I just feel like we need to put less pressure on ourselves to be perfect. We need to study ourselves more. Here's me getting my 10,000 steps in with mushroom. But yeah, we need to study our cyclic nature and plan accordingly. Make allowances and find things that help us get it all done, or as much as we can done, based on each week of the month. It's something I'm becoming increasingly passionate about. I'm tired of this productivity culture that isn't realistic or obtainable for everyone. Just putting together a Mother's Day hamper for my mum here while she's got Ike. I got her some of her favourite chocolates and drinks and some Locatane hand creams because she loves to garden. Anyway, so today I got up early and I got so much done. I feel great, but it isn't sustainable long term for me. I could not do this every day of the week, and that's okay. If you look back to my previous video, even despite the late start, I still got the children fed, washed and off to school. I still got my 10,000 steps in. And I left that day feeling just as happy and accomplished. And I think that's what I wanted to say with this video. Let's see how much tidying we can get done in 10 minutes. 10 minute timers are my go-to when I'm feeling overwhelmed and I'm struggling to keep on top of the amount of mess that's made in this house daily. And that's mess that's made by me as well. I have not yet mastered the art of pick up as you go along. Some of our brains just don't work that way, even though I so wish mine did. But anyway, you'd be surprised how much cleaner you can get a room in just 10 minutes. Often, when I'm feeling up to it, I get up an hour early and I just blitz the house with 10 minute timers. And I find it just sets the whole day up to be a good one. Because you just end up feeling so proud and accomplished. And you get to enjoy it in a nice, tidy environment. Shame it doesn't last 10 minutes once everyone's up, but I'm just happy the kids are happy. Speaking of kids, I know a lot of you will be thinking, why aren't your kids tidying up this mess? And it's because my seven-year-old has absolutely nothing to do with this mess. He's actually at school at the minute. But it's the two-year-old that causes the chaos. His idea of fun is getting everything out all over the floor. And of course, I do try to encourage him to tidy up his messes when he's finished. But he's at a very defiant age. And when I do manage to convince him to fill a box with toys, he'll turn around and tip another one out. He's two. He's still learning and he just wants to play. And I just wanted to get this done fast today. I just think it's important not to make assumptions. Of course I want my kids to learn these important life skills and of course I'm doing my best to teach them. Most of us parents are just doing our best and there's no handbook for parenting, is there? We're learning on the job. And I think collectively all any of us want is to just raise happy, functional adults. And in my opinion, that has a lot to do with compromise and balance. Some days I'll blitz this room and some days I'll take the time to encourage them to tidy up for themselves. And honestly, on the occasions I do have a quick speed clean in here by myself, it's more for my own mental health. I'm choosing between a 10 minute clean and an hour and a half long clean where things carry on getting tipped out over and over again. Because a calm and happy me means I can be a better mum. 
it means I'll have more patience ready for the next time I attempt to teach my two-year-old to tidy up after himself. And yeah, I know not everyone will agree, but that's just me. Balance is key. He'll get there. Anyway, we had around two minutes left and that bed took way too long. I did want to have a quick hoover, but I thought sorting this bookshelf out took priority. Unfortunately, just at the end, I'd paused the timer to go and do something and then forgot to set it again. So I'm not sure whether we went over the timer or we were right on time, but you get the picture. Anyway, I'm going to be doing loads more 10 minute timer cleans. So if you enjoyed this one, there's lots more on the way. And I hope this video, as always, gave you a boost of motivation if you weren't feeling very productive today. And in just a few seconds, I'm going to show you the final product of a 10 minute clean. Here we are. So much better. I hope you enjoyed watching and I'll see you in the next one. Let's see how much cleaner we can get this toilet in just 10 minutes. I've been using 10 minute timers to help me keep on top of the house for around a year now. And honestly, it has been life changing. I'm just picking rooms at random for these videos based on which rooms annoy me the most. And this toilet is a tripping hazard at this point. So let's see what we can get done. My first plan of action when I do these speed cleans is always to clear the floor and the surfaces. And then depending on how long that takes, I get to cleaning. Obviously the cleaning part is more important and needs to be done more often in certain rooms. This toilet is a prime example of that. So I wanted to spend the majority of the time I had actually cleaning rather than tidying. The plugs started to gather a bit of mould so I really wanted to get that sorted. I absolutely love these kind of cleans when something's a bit grimy and it actually needs a good clean. The ones where you can see the difference before and after. So satisfying. Anyway, why do I love 10 minute timers so much? Well, it's because they're my secret weapon. As a person with executive dysfunction, someone who struggles to initiate tasks and maintain momentum and motivation, they are the perfect amount of time to trick my brain into thinking cleaning is a game. And cleaning and tidying has gone from something I dread to something I actually look forward to. Because I want to beat the clock, I want to improve on my last clean, and yeah, I just can't recommend them enough for people who have brains that work like mine. Anyone who's followed me from the beginning will know just how far I've come. Just how much the overall state of my house has improved. And just how much happier and more confident I am in my ability to be a functional human being. Yes, my house still does get messy, and often, as you can see. But it doesn't often get to the point now where my house is so bad a whole house clean will take days. Or the point that my house isn't a place I want to spend time in. That was my life a few years ago. I seriously felt like I was drowning in it and I felt like such a failure. I couldn't work out why I found all of this so hard when other people seemed to just get on with it and were able to keep on top of it. Now, although my house probably won't ever live up to a lot of people's standards, as a busy mum with two young boys, it meets my own. And that's all down to implementing these little tips and tricks that I'm sharing with you now. After growing up messy and thinking I was just lazy, I've finally come to a place of acceptance and genuine love for myself. Despite all of my flaws, I've got a lot of positive qualities too. We all have. I one day realised that I wasn't going to suddenly wake up one morning a changed person who found all of this easy. I think for a long time, at the back of my head, that's what I was banking on. That I'd just grow up and grow out of it. And I also know now it was never a case of just pushing myself harder. Anyone with executive dysfunction or ADHD or anything similar will know just how hard we're working just to function at base level on a day-to-day -day basis. It's exhausting. When I accepted myself for who I am, that made way for me to find solutions that actually worked for me. And I'm so happy that I have a platform to be able to share that with other people like me and to keep you company and let you know you're not the only one that finds this hard. I wish there was someone that could have done that for me when I was growing up. And it's an absolute privilege to be able to be that person for others now. Anyway, we have 10 minutes left on the timer. Oops, just gone. But I wanted to clean the door handle and get rid of that cheesy handprint, so I went over by a few seconds. I couldn't just leave it after I started. I usually find though, especially when I go into these cleans really unmotivated, after I've done 10 minutes, I always want to do more. But yeah, that's another 10 minutes be clean, done.